What's growing on, gardeners? It's Tuesday, December 5th, and it is a gorgeous day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. Have you struggled to grow proper heads of broccoli? I did for years, but I finally cracked the code that has allowed me to grow perfect heads of broccoli every single time. And on today's video, I'm going to share with you the four changes I made that made it all possible. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Broccoli sounds like one of those things that should be so easy to grow, but it actually isn't. Broccoli is part of the brassica family of vegetables and they are very susceptible to fluctuations in temperatures, specifically prolonged warm temperatures. The slightest amount of prolonged warm weather can cause broccoli to bolt on you, flower and go to seed. This happens to so many growers every single year. They finally start to get floret development, but instead of getting a nice well-developed head, they get a crummy head that flowers and goes to seed on them because they get a few warm days mixed in there that just ruins everything. To make things even more complicated, broccoli plants can also struggle in cold weather. While the plants themselves are quite frost hardy, the heads are not. And when the florets start to develop on you, if you were to get a hard frost, it could actually damage the heads. Broccoli plants want to exist in a world where every single day is 55 degrees Fahrenheit and every single night is between 40 and 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And who out there has that prolonged weather for 60 plus days in a row? Not very many of us. And that is the challenge that we all face growing broccoli. The places that they want to grow basically doesn't really exist in many locations in the United States. While we cannot control the weather, there are ways that we can get around the weather. And that is what I have done. I live in North Carolina, which is far from the optimal location for growing brassicas. It's very difficult to grow them here. Yet employing these tips, I am able to have perfect heads of broccoli growing in my garden. Tip number one is the most critical, and that is to start your broccoli plants from seed, but as transplants. Do not direct sow them into the garden. That's because, as we already established, broccoli plants need to grow and mature at a very specific temperature range where it is not too hot and not too cold. So if you wait for the proper soil conditions outdoors to sow your broccoli from seed directly, by the time they germinate and get going, you likely will have missed that window for ideal temperatures for the plants to mature in. You should be starting your broccoli indoors from seed anywhere from seven to nine weeks before you're going to get the optimal temperatures outside for transplanting. That way when they go into the garden they start off as large transplants. This will make it a lot easier to thread that needle so they mature at the right time because we generally have very narrow shoulder seasons where we're only going to have a few weeks a year of the appropriate temperatures for our broccoli floret development to occur. And when you start with larger plants from the get-go, you will have a much higher success rate at threading that needle. Tip two is a game changer for me in my garden, and that is to plant your mature broccoli transplants two to four weeks earlier than temperatures otherwise would allow. That means you would be planting your fall broccoli two to four weeks earlier in the summer when it's too hot. And in the spring, you would be planting it two to four weeks earlier than otherwise in the winter when it's still too cold. And that will get us a big jump start on our broccoli growing. Now this may sound contradictory to everything I just said, but let me explain. First things first, what do I define as a mature transplant? Well, a mature transplant will be a broccoli plant that is roughly six to eight weeks past germination. So that will probably be something like a four inch tall broccoli transplant. That's why I said give your plants seven to nine weeks from the day you plant the seed indoors. That will give you a one to two week buffer for the germination process. So now we have our mature transplants ready to go. Here's the problem that I ran into every single year. Here in North Carolina, it would usually be cool enough to start transplanting broccoli transplants out into my garden in somewhere between October 1st to the 15th. But the problem 
is when I plant it out that late in my garden, the sun gets so weak that the transplants usually wouldn't be ready for harvest until somewhere between Christmas and early January. And by then, the hard freezes here get so strong that it was damaging my broccoli heads. Similarly, by the time I could transplant out my broccoli transplants in the winter, I have to wait until things get mild enough in late February and early March. Well, when I plant them out, they would not want to mature until late April, early May, and then we'd get a string of hot days, and that would send my broccoli heads into a flowering and bolting cycle, and I wouldn't get good head development. That was the conundrum I was running into. So what I did this fall is something new that I've never done with my broccoli transplants before. Instead of waiting until early to mid-October to plant them out, I planted them out into my garden in the middle of September, about three weeks ahead of schedule when it was still too warm for broccoli plants. But what I did was I planted them underneath shade cloth, 40% shade cloth to be exact. And what that did was it kept the hot, strong September sun off of my plants and it kept them artificially cool, almost like it was a month later than it really was. This allowed me to get a huge jump start on my broccoli transplants so they could get going while the days were still nice and long in September and they could take advantage of those full day lengths to really put on a lot of growth. And then by the time my normal transplanting time rolled around in October, they were well established and on their way. And having that three week head start has made all of the difference. And that's why my broccoli this year is so perfect. So now instead of doing what I always had to do in fall and fight the hard freezes of late December, early January to try and get some mature broccoli heads off my plants, I'm dealing with the relatively light, irregular frosts of November and early December. So my plants are maturing while the weather is still good and I'm not dealing with any cold damage. That's why these plants look so absolutely perfect. It hasn't gotten that cold yet. And planting them out three weeks earlier underneath shade cloth has made all the difference. Now guess what I'm going to do this late winter in order to get really good head development with my spring broccoli? Well, instead of waiting for the milder February weather to plant out my broccoli, I'm going to start more transplant seeds now with the ideal time frame of getting the plants transplanted out into my garden in the middle to late January. So I'll get another three week head start, but I'm going to plant all of the plants underneath frost cloth row covers instead so I can keep them artificially warm and keep the hard frost off the plant. And getting that three week head start, I anticipate will get my broccoli heads to mature in late March, early April while the weather is still cool and they're not going to have that big issue with bolting like they normally have when I plant them out in the spring on my normal schedule. The third tip that made all the difference with the broccoli growing in my garden is I've covered them every single time we've gotten a frost. Now, to date, we have had a total of four freezes. Two have been light freezes and two have been hard freezes. And I've gone through the trouble of covering them with a frost blanket every single time. Yes, it has been an extra step, but it has been worth it. Now, my entire life, I've always labored under the misconception that broccoli is tolerant of hard frosts and freezes, and that is is true of the plants themselves. The plants will survive, but they generally take damage, specifically the broccoli florets, which is generally what we want to eat. They are the most frost and freeze susceptible. So hard frosts and freezes can actually damage them. Now, like I said, I know this is an extra step to break out a row cover and cover them, but again, it's not really a big deal, especially if you get yourself some agricultural fabric, because agricultural fabric has light transmissibility. We had three or four really cold days in a row. So I actually covered my entire bed of broccoli and I just left it on for four days. You could leave them on even longer. They're made to be left on all season. So when the cold weather starts, you can just take one of those light transmissible agricultural fabrics and just cover your beds with it. Now, the only thing that you need to know is if you choose to do that, they will warm up during the day, which can send them into a flowering or bolting cycle. So it may not be worth your while to leave it on all the time. I would only do that if it's going to be persistently cold, but covering them at night if you're going to get a frost or a freeze will go miles to ensure that you have beautiful perfect heads of broccoli. And if you're curious what agricultural fabric I'm using in my beds, I will link to the one I use down in the video description for your convenience. And the fourth tip I'm going to give you is to cover your broccoli plants with shade cloth if you get prolonged warm weather. Now, prolonged warm weather probably isn't going to affect a small broccoli transplant when they freshly go 
into the ground. But when you're dealing with larger plants like this that are either about to start forming heads or they already have formed heads, it is very critical that you cover them. Now what do I define as warm temperatures? That will be a clear sunny day where it's 65 degrees or warmer. If you're going to get a lot of weather like that, that could actually make your broccoli bolt on you, believe it or not. And if you get lots of weather in the 70s, well that can be really dangerous, let alone 80s. It only takes a day or two of 80 degree temperatures to completely ruin a head of broccoli. Now again, I know this is an extra step, but what's the point of growing broccoli plants? Plants if you're not going to see them all the way through. Shade cloth is really easy to procure. I'll make sure that I link to the exact one that I used down in the video description of this video right here. It's a great product and it has dramatically changed how I grow food in my garden. So believe it or not, a broccoli plant like this that hasn't formed any type of head yet is still susceptible to bolting. And this is obviously going to be more relevant to those that are growing broccoli in the spring. It's more difficult, generally speaking, to grow broccoli in the spring than in the fall due to the temperatures. But if you live in a place that is prone to warm fronts, like many of us in the south and southeast do, or on the west coast, it is worth your while to get that shade cloth. And of course, all gardeners growing broccoli in the spring should have shade cloth on hand. So now that I've given you all of my tips that have helped me be successful, let's go and harvest this beautiful head of broccoli. And pro tip, don't cut the entire plant down because these side shoots right here that you can actually see, they will form mini florets, mini heads of broccoli. So I'm actually going to cut this right here and then I'm going to allow all of these side shoots down here to develop. You can see I'm already getting a little floret right there. They will all produce little florets on the side. Check out this beautiful, perfect head of broccoli that I just harvested here in my garden in North Carolina. Now at first glance, this may not be as large of a head of broccoli that you'll get in the grocery store. That's because I grow earlier maturing varieties here in the southeast. Because our weather is so wacky and we get cold weather followed by warm weather on a roller coaster, broccoli really struggles here. So I find that the early maturing varieties that don't make such big heads grow better here. The really large headed ones have a longer days to maturity so there's more opportunity for the heads to bolt on you. So if you live in something like the Pacific Northwest where you have more stable consistent weather, the longer maturity varieties are probably going to be more successful for you. But if you're in a climate like mine where the winters are erratic and you go from warm front to cold front, the smaller headed varieties, although not as large obviously, they grow a lot more easily. And you'll see that is a pretty darn good looking head of broccoli right there, and I'm going to eat this for dinner tonight. And that right there are the tips that I have employed that have helped me become consistently successful growing broccoli. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in real life in my garden, as well as the row covers, shade cloth, and fertilizers that have helped me become successful growing broccoli, I will link to them all down in my Amazon storefront link in the video description. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Wow, oh wow, Dale. This is pretty cool. It's rare that we get to see a gator out sunning in November. Usually they must burrow into the mud or something. We see them a lot less this time of year, but I guess they have to go somewhere. It's pretty cool to see the gator out in the pond. I love seeing them. They're so cool. A lot of people are afraid of them, but there's a reason why they're in the dead center of the pond. They don't want to be anywhere near people. They don't want to be near the sidewalks. They don't want to be near the roads. They're pretty harmless unless you do something crazy. Right, buddy? Let's continue our walk on this gorgeous day.